wood heat is the most common cheap heating method for personal and small commercial greenhouses. In this video, we're going to explore six different ways you can use wood to heat your greenhouse and make more money by growing in the winter. The last of the six uses wood that doesn't even burn anything. Simple Tech, that's the name of this channel. We have piles of other videos on greenhouses you can check out after this one. Now, although wood heat often requires a lot of work, the energy in wood is enormous and capable of heating greenhouses with reasonable insulation through the coldest winters, even down to minus 40 degrees. There are six main types of wood heaters used in greenhouses today to make you more money by growing in the winter, and we're going to explore them all in this video. The first thing that usually comes to mind when you mention wood heat is a wood stove. Wood stoves can throw out an enormous amount of heat, and there are piles of different wood stove designs you can choose from to heat your greenhouse on those cold winter nights. Most are made from cast iron, and if constructed properly, can last for decades. One of the biggest concerns is the chimney though, especially if you have plastic greenhouse covering materials. If any hot ash hits your plastic, it's gonna melt. Also, if the hot chimney touches the plastic or gets too close to it, again, meltdown. There are several ways to prevent that, and it just takes some planning to ensure you don't destroy your plastic. Now, although wood stoves throw a lot of heat, they need to be restoked with wood every so many hours. This presents a bit of a problem through the night, as someone has to wake up in the middle of the night, go outside in the freezing cold, find some wood and put it in the stove to keep your greenhouse warm. Forget about having an uninterrupted eight hour sleep with a wood stove heating your greenhouse in the winter. And forget about going away for more than six hours. Mind you, if it's sunny out, you won't have to fire up your stove, only on cloudy days and nighttime. So there's some relief from the relentless stoking of the fire. Some wood burns longer than others too, as hardwoods tend to burn the longest, but they're also usually the most expensive to buy. That extra money might be worth it though, when you get to keep your eyes closed at night for a few more hours of blissful, uninterrupted sleep. Barrel stoves are basically a wood stove made out of a steel drum. There are single and double barrel stoves. The nice thing about a barrel stove is the huge burn chamber. A single barrel stove is often rated at 150,000 BTU an hour, where a double barrel stove can get up to 250,000 BTU an hour, a huge increase. Anything pumping out over 100,000 BTU an hour is an enormous amount of heat. And this can easily heat a decent sized greenhouse over a thousand square feet into some really cold weather in the winter. The double barrel stove has a smoke chamber above the burning chamber that heats up with smoke and is used to provide more surface area for faster, more efficient heating. The increase in BTO output I described for a double barrel stove shows this really does work. Barrel stoves are cheap to make with online kits costing a little over a hundred bucks plus the barrels, which most people can get cheap or even free. This is a huge price difference from a cast iron wood stove, which can cost new a thousand, two thousand or more. A famous YouTuber called MPH Gardener uses a double barrel stove to heat his greenhouse. Mind you, even MPH Gardener complains about having to wake up in the middle of the night to put wood in his barrel stove to heat his greenhouse. So although huge amounts of heat can be achieved from a double barrel stove, the problem of constantly stocking the fire exists regardless of the design of your stove. So be it an expensive cast iron model or a cheap DIY double barrel stove. A pellet stove is the first wood heat device I'm gonna review that will let you sleep through the night. Although not cheap and needing a small amount of electricity to operate, a pellet stove is a set it and forget it kind of heating device. Pellet stoves don't have the huge range of temperatures often experienced by wood stoves or barrel stoves. They tend to have a smaller controlled fire that is continuously fed new fuel by an auger in the form of wood pellets that you can buy 
to burn in them. Steady 24 seven heat is the main reason to choose a pellet stove. You only have to feed the hopper once a day or every other day on most pellet stoves. A famous geodesic dome YouTuber called web for deb built a homemade pellet stove to heat his greenhouse and designed it as a pellet stove rocket mass heater. If you want to cut your own wood, a pellet stove isn't the answer. But if all you're looking for is cheap, clean heat that you don't have to wake up in the middle of the night to attend, then a pellet stove might be the answer for you. Expect to pay at least 1500 bucks for a decent pellet stove, and many models can run over two or $3,000. Wood boilers work about 100 feet away from your greenhouse, outside, and have a large burning chamber for enormous BTU outputs. But the best part is they can burn throughout the night because they operate on a thermostat that controls airflow to the fire. By controlling the oxygen the fire gets, you can extend the fire for longer periods of time. Expect to refuel a wood boiler about twice a day. But if you feed it before bedtime, you can usually get a good eight hours of sleep even in the coldest temperatures, especially if you feed it hardwoods. Some of the new technology gasifier wood boilers are so efficient, they only require one feeding a day. Besides letting you sleep through the night, a wood boiler provides for even, stable heat through water radiators and radiant heat floors on thermostats. Plants love stability, and wood boilers tend to be the heating method of choice for small commercial operations. A famous YouTuber called Bright Agritech uses a wood boiler in Colorado to heat their greenhouses through the winter. Boilers come in different sizes, but one mid-sized boiler is often enough to heat two or three mid-sized 2,000 square foot greenhouses or a greenhouse in your entire homestead. You can often heat your house, your garage, your hot water tank, all from the same boiler, making it much more appealing and economical if one machine is supplying all your homestead heating needs. The only problem with a wood boiler is it'll chew through a lot of wood. Expect to go through nothing less than 10 cords a season in a cold climate. Rocket mass heaters seem to be the solution if you don't want to burn a lot of wood and you want to sleep through the night. The principle behind a rocket mass heater is to heat up a burning chamber to huge temperatures and expel the gases and heat through a large horizontal thermal mass chimney designed to soak up that heat and slowly give it back into the greenhouse. The thermal battery design allows for a slow radiating of the heat, slow enough so that a 15 to 20 minute burn can heat up the thermal mass chimney enough to slowly radiate heat back into your greenhouse throughout the night without having to start a new fire for many hours. Depending on the outside temperatures, you will have to start a new fire in the morning if it isn't sunny, but you'll rejoice in the amount of wood you're going to save. Rocket mass heaters can burn as much as five times less wood in a season as a wood stove, and sometimes as much as 10 times less wood than a wood boiler. If efficiency in burning wood is your goal, and you want to sleep through the night, it's hard to avoid a rocket mass heater, and if you build it yourself, it can cost as little as a few hundred dollars. How do you get heat from wood without fire? Composting. Composting can actually get more than two times the energy out of wood than burning. And using compost for heat doesn't just mean you'll sleep through the night. A large compost pile can provide 24 seven constant 140 degree heat through a radiator or radiant heat floor for many months. The technology for this was pioneered decades ago in France by a man named Jean Pain. I have another video describing how it's done in detail on this YouTube channel, so I won't get into too much explanation here, other than to say all you need is a couple of friends to invest two to four days of work setting up the compost pile, and if it's done right, you can walk away getting continuous heat all winter long with little to no additional effort. If time is money, investing a few days in the fall to set this up for winter heat might just be the best environmentally conscious investment you can make to heat your greenhouse, especially if you don't want to get up every day to throw wood on the fire.
And think of all the great free organic fertile compost you'll have for growing your plants after the pile stops producing heat in the spring. That's it. Six ways you can heat your greenhouse with wood. I hope you enjoyed this video. Simple Tech has piles of other videos on greenhouses and heating you can check out. Let me know in the comments below how you heat your greenhouse and if you know anyone that might be interested in greenhouse heating, please share this video with them as we all benefit from sharing knowledge. See you next time.